Welcome tonight, Clubbers, to Awana. Wow. Uh, even though I know we've got a virus going on and we're having a lot of problems and we can't have Awana, we can't go to school, and we can't go to church, and uh, yet even so, we're able to bring uh, Awana to you right there in your own home. And I'm so glad you're there tonight. And so at this time, we want everybody to stand at attention. Attention. Present colors. Join me as we say the pledges of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Iwana flag, which stands for the Iwana clubs, whose goal is to reach boys and girls with the gospel of Christ and train them to serve him. Firmly Awana stands, led by the Lord's commands. Approved workmen are not ashamed, boys and girls for his service claim. Hail Awana on the march for youth, hail Awana holding forth the truth, building lives on the word of God. Awana stands. Our Savior following with steps unfaltering and love unaltering. His praise we sing, His banner over us in service glorious. We'll fight victorious for Christ our King. Say big, youth on the march. Post colors. All right, at this time, boys and girls, I want to lead us all in a word of prayer, as we always do in our Awana ceremony, opening ceremony. And, of course, everybody right now is concerned about all the sickness in our country and uh, all the struggles that we're going through and we're going to be talking about some of those things in a few moments, but uh, we certainly want to pray for that. Uh, we know that even though uh, maybe not everybody is sick with this new virus, but some people are having a lot of other problems, and, and life goes on. And so we just want to pray. And so if you'll all bow your heads with me right now, I will pray for our Awana families and our Awana program tonight. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you uh, for the privilege of coming to you in prayer. And God, we believe that when we call upon you and call upon your name uh, that you hear and respond and so god we want to pray for our country tonight uh, this is a hard situation that we're in and going through uh, but god we believe that you're able to bring us through this and, and make our country stronger and better and i pray in this time lord we might all understand how much we need you sometimes uh, we leave you out too much maybe go too many days when we don't think about you and how important you are to us and how much we love you and how much you love us. And so, Father, I pray that you'd help us during this time to just relearn, to uh, grow in our understanding of how much we need you. We pray for each one of the families in our Awana program and in our church and in our community and our nation. A lot of families are struggling right now, and we pray, Lord, that... Uh, uh, you would keep your promise to us that you'd supply our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And that we just wouldn't rely just on what the government does, but God, uh, that we might uh, rely on you. And also that we might uh, call upon each other and help one another. Uh, God, we pray all of these things then in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, if everybody would sit down now real quickly, we'll have our council time tonight i know normally uh, you have a council time in your club at this point in time we dismiss the sparks uh, but we're not ready for the sparks to go yet uh, we'd uh, then after them they'd go the the tnt and then trek would have game time but tonight we're all going to stay here and y'all are going to listen there right there in your own living room 
or wherever you are as we go through our council time lesson. And our lesson tonight is going to be based on Psalm 139. And in Psalm 139 and verse 1, the psalmist says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there's not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You know, one of the first things we learn about God, boys and girls, is that he is everywhere. And that's really what the psalmist, the writer of this Psalm 139 is talking to us about. How that God is everywhere. And we can never go anywhere where uh, God is not there or with us. Uh, God is at home right there with you now. Right there in your living room. Not only is God everywhere, but God knows everything that's going on in our lives. And we're going to talk about some of the things that we see here in Psalm 139 that God knows about each one of us. Uh, the first thing is, of course, God knows who we are. That's what he says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. Now, when the Bible says that God has searched us, boys and girls, what that means is, is that God has looked real careful at all of us. He's looked at us uh, from the top to bottom, from the back and the front and the side. He has searched us out. He knows what color hair we have. He knows that my hair used to be brown, uh, but now it's mainly gray and a whole lot of white. Uh, but God knew that. Uh, he knows my eye colors. My eyes are green. Uh, he knows uh, everything about me. He knows what my birthday is. Uh, he knows what my name is. He knows how old I am. He knows how old you are. He knows how much I weigh. Uh, he knows everything about us. God has searched us, and He knows us. Now, your mom and dad knows you pretty well. You know your brothers and sisters really well. You know your parents really well. Uh, but the fact is, none of us have a friend. None of us have a family member that knows us better than God knows us. God knows us. He has searched us. He knows everything about us. He knows us. You know, it's a lot of people, maybe you know what their name is, but you don't know them very well. Uh, but God knows us all very, very well. He knows us. He has searched us, and He knows us. He searches our hearts so that God knows what we like and what we don't like. God knows that I don't like English peas. He knows I do like to fish. Uh, he knows I love to go to church and that I love to talk about Jesus. God knows, you see, the things that we like and the things that we don't like. He knows us and knows all about us. Then the psalmist says, God knows what we're doing. And that's right there again in Psalm 139. You know, he says, my sitting down and my rising up. Uh, you know what God knows what we are doing. Are, are you sitting down right now? Let's all stand up. Yeah, I'm, I mean you, boys and girls. Stand up. You're sitting down? Stand up. Yeah, you Trek kids, I, I, I want you to stand up too. Now, come on, don't, don't give me that look. Uh, if you're sitting down, stand up. Now that you're standing up, you know what I want you to do? Sit down. Why did I do that? Because Psalm 139 says God knows when we stand up, and He knows when we're sitting down. God knows exactly what we are doing all the time. Uh, God knows us then. God knows what we're doing. But He also knows what we're thinking about. You see, Psalm 139 says that God understands our thoughts afar off. Now that gives us a couple of great things about God and understanding that God can hear and understand what we're thinking. That means, number one, when we pray... We don't always have to pray out loud. You know why? Because God hears your thoughts. And we know that because He says it right here in Psalm 139 that God understands our thoughts from afar off. He knows what we think. That means you might be in a place sometime where maybe you don't feel like uh, that you could pray right out loud. Uh, 
maybe in school or around a crowd of people, you wouldn't be comfortable praying out loud. But boys and girls, I want you to know that you can pray to God at any time because God hears your thoughts. All you have to do is speak His name, and there He is. He hears that loud and clear. We can't do that for anybody. We don't have that ability, but God has that ability. He knows what we're thinking. He hears our thoughts. And while that is true, He also uh, he hears the, the thoughts that maybe we shouldn't have. Sometimes we think about doing some bad things, maybe, or things that we would say that we shouldn't say. God, God hears those. He knows if we're angry. He knows if we're hurting or sad. If you're worried about this new sickness, God knows you're worried. So God knows us. He knows what we are doing. And he knows what we are thinking. Then verse 3 tells us, You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. When he talks about our path, he's talking about where we're going. And it doesn't matter whether we're walking or running or on our bike or in our car in the back seat. God knows where we are and he knows what our destination is. He knows our path. If we get tired and we need to rest, God knows that. He sees us then when we take a break, when we're taking a nap and lying down. If it's bedtime and mom and dad tell us to time to get up and go to bed, God knows that. God knows we need our rest. He knows. So he knows what we're doing. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're going, where we're going. He knows when we need to rest. And then he says he's acquainted with all our ways. Our ways, uh, students, uh, are, are the things that we do a lot. We do them over and over again. We could call them habits. That's a good word for us. It's a habit. Uh, if you get up every morning and you go in and brush your teeth, that's a habit. It's a very good habit. Another good habit we have, we hear a lot about these days, is washing our hands. Washing our hands. Wash, wash, wash. Washing our hands. That, that's a very good habit to have. After you've been out and touched something or been around, we need to wash our hands. That's, that's a good, good habit to have. Brushing our teeth, uh, washing our hands. But a habit can also be bad. That's a habit. To, sometimes we get a, a habit of being mad and upset every time something happens we don't like. You see, God knows our ways. God knows our ways. And there's one more thing that we find in this psalm that God says he, he knows about us. He says, there's not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. So, so God knows us, and uh, He knows where we're going. Uh, he knows what we're doing. He, he knows what we're thinking. He knows when we need to rest. Uh, he's acquainted with all our ways. He knows what we do over and over again all the time. And He knows what we say. Every single word. Uh, I don't know how it is that we, we learn how to say mean things to people, but we do. Uh, we can say mean things to our parents. As, as you get older, uh, some of our older students tonight, um, you hear some of the other things, the bad words that other kids say, and it makes them seem so grown up, and then you want to say those bad words too because they make you feel grown up. But remember, God hears every word we say even the things that we shouldn't say. And so when we think about the fact that God is everywhere and that God knows everything and that He's around us all the time, all the time, then we learn that we need to be careful. Uh, this time, you students, you, you've been at home now for, for several weeks. you spent a lot of time with your brothers and sisters and, and your mom and dad and if you're like me and, and like I was when I was a little boy and around my brothers and sisters, uh, my brothers and sisters kind of got on my nerves a lot. I don't know if that's the way it is with you, uh, but my brother and sister got on my nerves a lot. But, but if they were here tonight, they would tell you real quickly that I got on their nerves a whole lot. 
And they would probably be right because I did that a lot. It would be real easy for us maybe not to obey our parents, maybe not to talk to them the way that we should or not to talk to one another the way we should. And, and so tonight we just want to think about the fact that God is right there with you in your home. And you may not can get out and go to school, but God is with you right there in your home. And we want you to be good boys and girls and, and do what your mom and dad says and to think about God and how to worship Him. We're going to close out our council time with a song, and you all know it. So I want you to sing along uh, with this group of kids as they're singing this great old song. Oh, be careful. All right, moms and dads and adults and even maybe a few from our Wednesday night Bible study class, I want to thank you. If you have listened in to our WANA program for a few moments tonight in our WANA council time, we tried to give a, a lesson on Psalm 139. And I tried to do that for our students, our children, uh, so that they might understand that God is always around, that God is always with us, and that He is watching, He's aware of literally everything that goes on in our life and along the way in this psalm 139 if you'll read it and i'd encourage you to read the whole thing tonight uh, might even read it to your uh, children before you go to bed and i'd encourage you to read it and, and as you read it you're going to see the psalmist as he thinks about all the things that god knows and and how that he is always with us and he is always aware of what's happening in our life the psalmist said such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, he said. I cannot attain to it. I, I can't wrap my head around how that God could be so aware of everything going on in my life and at the same time be aware of everything that's going on in all of the billions of people on this planet. It's too high for us. God's knowledge is too great for us. We can't even describe it or comprehend how big God is and how much He knows. It's incredible. Now, I realize that some of you parents are moving on to your lessons, and I'm not going to take up a lot of your time tonight. I'm going to try to wrap this up in about 10 minutes as I can. Just a few more thoughts that I want to share with you from Psalm 139. You realize as parents and as adults much more than your children do, the comprehensive way then that God knows us and understands it. And the psalmist then is going to talk about a few things that we'd all do well tonight to think about as well. One of the things, interestingly, that he talks about, considering how that God is everywhere and He knows everything, he describes how futile it is to try to run from God. And of all the things that he could have described in Psalm 139 as he talked about how God knows us and how God works in our life, isn't it interesting that he brings up running from God? Here it is, verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where could I run to, God, where you wouldn't be? If I could somehow ascend into the and to the highest of the heavens. If I could climb the highest mountain, when I, when I reach that pinnacle, that peak of the highest of all the mountains, God, you'd be there. If I could swim down into the depths, into the deepest parts of the bowels of the earth, after I'd gone down as far as we could go, God, you'd be there. You ever think about maybe what it'd be like just to fly away? In fact, sometimes uh, we just talk about, oh, I just wish I could spread my tiny wings and fly away. Somebody ought to write a song about that sometime, you know. Spread my tiny wings. Oh, wouldn't it be great if I could just fly away? 
and be at rest. And, and the psalmist thinks about it. Maybe he's seeing a, a bird going flying away and, and headed out uh, toward the Mediterranean Ocean. He watches it. Oh, I wish I could do that. I just wish I could go and, 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 and just take wing and go out into the ocean. But even, God, if I did that, even if I could mount up with the wings of eagles, God, I could not get to where you aren't. Because wherever I go, God, you are there. And so he describes the, the futile effort to run from God. You can't run from God. Interestingly then, the second thing he talks about is trying to hide from God. Verse 11, if I say, surely the darkness shall follow me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. But the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. There's nowhere where we can go where we can hide from God. We can hide from one another, but we can't hide from God. He continues then that these famous passages, speaking of, of God's activity and our very existence, to remind us that we are made especially by Him and for Him. Verse 13, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me when as yet... There were none of them. We know so, so much more about our genetic composition these days than the psalmist did. We hear a lot about DNA, and rightly so. We know about all the possibilities that could have happened when the egg of the mother and the, uh, combined with the seed of the father and, and, and your life and my life began. In practical time, terms, we could have all been shorter or taller or darker skinned or lighter skinned. We could have had straight hair or curly hair. We could have been a math geek or, 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 or a jock or a musician or introvert or an extrovert. So many things, so many things were determined by our DNA. But the psalmist says, God, you were at work to make me. You fashioned me. That in that miraculous way that we don't understand, this incredible knowledge of God and power of God saw to it that we would be exactly the person that we are. Sometimes people wonder why that the abortion issue is such a serious issue to Bible-believing folks. And one of the reasons why is right here in Psalm 139. We believe that God made us that he was at work to fashion every person who is ever born into this world. And that he is making them not just through their life and their life experiences, but he makes us in the womb. There's more. You see, God knew the days of our lives. And we can rest assured that the current pandemic in this country did not catch God taking a nap or catch him off guard. Uh, the, psalm tell, the psalmist tells us that God knew the days that he had fashioned for us when as yet there were none of them. None of us know how many days we have. God does. God does. And he concludes then with this great invitation to God. After considering all these things, how much God knows about us, how well God knows us. The fact that uh, we cannot hide from God, the fact that we cannot run from God, that no matter how hard we try in our life, we're going to find ourselves time after time running back into God. Run from Him. Which way are you going to go? You want to go east? Run all the way to Hazen. Guess what? When you get there, God's there. You're going to hide from him. I'm going to get in my closet under my bed. No. God's there waiting for you. We can't hide from God. We can't run from God. 
We're going to find God wherever we go because God is there before us. The psalmist then cries out to God with this great invitation to him. This is a psalmist and his prayer to God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxiety. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Know, God, number one, what is on my heart. Whatever that is, know what's on my heart. Know my anxieties. Let me tell you something, moms and dads, adults, We've all got a lot of anxiety right now. We can take those to God. God, know my anxieties. Check me for failures. We've got those too. And when we cry out to God to check out our hearts for failures, if there's any wicked way in us, it is only so that by pointing out those things to us, we can confess our sins so that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then we ask God to lead us in the way that He would have us to go. The most important way that God would have us all to go is the way of the cross. Because all of these things about how God knows us and how God is aware of everything going on in our life and God knows the words that are in our tongue and the thoughts that are in our head and He knows our hearts and He knows our anxieties, it all comes back to the cross. Because it is there at the cross that we understand that God loves us, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and that we can believe on Him and trust Him and receive Him as our Savior. That is the good news of the gospel, is that we can have a real relationship with God. And at that point, God is no longer just all around us, but God lives inside of us because we receive Him as our Savior. If you've not done that, there'll never be a better time for you to do it than now. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, and you call upon Him in prayer. Remember, God hears your thoughts. You don't have to pray it out loud. It doesn't hurt to do it. But right where you sit, right there in your living room or stand, you can say, Lord, I know I've sinned. I know Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I just call on you to be my Savior because I know I need you in my life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and you shall be saved. If you made that decision to receive Christ as your Savior tonight, maybe you need more information, please, please contact us. If you're one of our WANA families, I've sent you my email. I have sent you my phone number, my cell number. You can text me, write me a note. Come by the office. Uh, We'll maintain good social distancing and have a conversation about Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We'll have a live feed Sunday morning in this very place. Uh, Same YouTube channel, uh, same Facebook live. Come see us. God bless you.